What's happening, YouTube? And all my new subscribers, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. And uh, I've got a couple things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so if you are someone who is getting into shrimp or are thinking about it, um, that's what we're going to discuss today. But first, I've got a couple shout outs. All right, I haven't made a uh, actual video in a couple weeks. I've just been tossing out some shorts. I had, I had a bunch of projects I'm waiting on that are taking quite some time. Like I did a part one, but I got to wait six weeks to see the results so I can show them to you guys. But anyway, so shout outs, uh, new subscribers. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Harry, the Harry Woodsman. <laughs> He's made a bunch of comments. Uh, I thought I should make, you know, a funny sound. Anyway, that's what you got. He uh, found me, I think maybe a week or two ago, and just started burning through videos and learning things left and right. Sound familiar, G family? Hmm? All right, so uh, thank you, Harry Woodsman. I, I appreciate all the uh, lovely comments, and uh, I'm glad you found a lot of beneficial information for you. Um, it is hard to bump into me, you know, so, uh, anyway, so other subscribers that, uh, I have received over the past, and there are a lot more than this, I just, if you don't say anything, I won't notice unless I happen to get an email, I don't know why I get an email for some, and some I don't, but anyway, here we are, so, subscriber number one, besides the Harry Woodsman, uh, David Cooliar, if I pronounce that wrong, I am terribly sorry, I did not mean, I, Anyone who's been following me for a while knows my pronunciation is just terrible. But uh, anyway, uh, another new subscriber, Dave Ant. He made a couple comments. Hey, thank you so much for saying hi and asking questions. I really do appreciate it. New subscriber, Joe Q327. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. New subscriber, P14, capital J, zero. S, thank you uh, for joining us. I appreciate it. I'm not sure if that was actually supposed to spell anything, so I don't think my pr pronunciation was incorrect, but thank you for joining us, and I do appreciate it. Uh, another new subscriber, Dave Janowski. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really happy to have you. New subscriber, Halo Wagmore. Yo! What's happening? Glad you're here. Appreciate it. Uh, another new subscriber, Mary Page Flynn. Thank you so much for your lovely comments. I really do appreciate it. And then finally, new subscriber. And I, I, uh, Mary made uh, several comments. So she's a very nice person. Um, last new subscriber, JTS TOFF1. Oh, wait, does that say JT stuff? I think it does. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. All right. So now that we're done with uh, uh, greeting everyone and welcoming you here, uh, we are going to talk about uh, Neil Caradina shrimp, in particular, um, the ones that I've been breeding. And they have finally been having babies, and uh, there was something I was going for. So uh, about four or five months ago, I started buying uh, Blue Dream shrimp and um, Black Rillies. And for people who aren't familiar with what a really uh, Neo Caradina David Eye is, those are shrimp that are colored with a white, uh, not a white, but with a clear um, stripe in the center. So like you can have red reallys where they'll have a red head and a red tail, but a clear stripe in the center. And you can have, you know, orange really same thing, or orange head, orange tail with the clear strip in the center. Well, I was doing some experimenting with Blue Dream Shrimp. I also put uh, one blue jelly in there, uh, which is a light blue um, Neo Caradina, and uh, some black rillies. And I was breeding these together to get some variants of uh, carbon uh, rillies, which there are several different kinds, and I am so excited. I got like all different kinds. So carbon rillies in general would be like a black head, a black tail with a blue strip. So to get that is I had the black reallys, bred them with the blue dreams, and the blue dreams filled in those clear gaps, and I got myself some uh, babies with black heads, black tails, and a blue body, but I also got some unexpected 
uh, really that are just awesome. I, I, I got some babies. They're like tiger striped, like black stripes and blue and black stripes. Man, they're wicked. So I'm going to cut this video. We're going to head over to the tank. I'll point out as many as I can, and I got something cool because the babies love to hang out um, upside down on the floaters, and I'll go and I'll just jiggle the floaters, and you'll just see the babies just pew, 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 just, you know, like fall into the bottom. So we're going to check them out and see how many different uh, kinds we can find in there. Um, it's really exciting, and if you're considering getting into shrimp, um, this is just like, you know, one of the perks. You can experiment. Now, don't perk, don't experiment with different colors because black black uh, shrimp like black blackberry neocaridinas and black relis they're not truly black what they are is an extremely dark royal blue that looks black but blue is in there so you got to stay within their colors so i'm going to cut this short then we're going to go over here check out the tank i'm going to bust out my tweezers oh we're also going to be testing um the uh, GH and KH, what has been working for me, what, what, um, what's keeping them alive, what's keeping them breeding, etc. And um, I, I do, when it comes to general hardness and carbonate hardness, I do do the liquid stuff. Um, with um, other parameters, um, nitrites, nitrates, and pH, I, I still use strips for those. But when it comes to shrimp, I need to be really accurate on what my total dissolved solids are and then find out how much of that is my general hardness because if you don't have a stable general hardness that is in um, parameters needed for shrimp you'll start having failed molts so uh, we'll talk about that too so let me take a break or one second and then we'll go over here we'll point some out and let's see what we got one second uno momento por favor all right Welcome back. So we're going to take a look here. Um, I want to point out a couple. So right, let's see if we can get this to focus. Right here, you'll see there is a black really. So black head, black tail. You'll see little black spots in there. All right. And uh, there's another one right there at the end. And uh, we're just going to see how many we can find and then talk about them a little bit. Now, I do have one full-blown, a successful carbon really right here. Uh, let's see if we can get a side view. So, uh, black head, black tail, and blue center. That's what I was shooting for is uh, getting this variant, which is awesome to look at. And uh, I did just feed them so I could get some to come out. Let's see if I can make it. Ooh, ooh, here we go. Here's a good close-up of you see it's got a blue bottom and uh, black head black tail let's see if we can get the babies to start raining from the top come on babies all right there we go pew, 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 pew. and you can see them back there on the wall too but yeah, they love that, and they love this subwasser tang um, uh, moss that I have here for these ledges. And, yeah, you can just see all the different variants. I, I'm trying to find the one blue jelly. Oh, there he is. This one, yeah, see, it's a really light blue. He's grubbing on some food. Now, when you do have babies, babies don't really like to move around that much. They will kind of stay stationary waiting on food to fall for them. Now, um, I, I go with a couple. Uh, for the babies, I feed them these uh, fl uh, fluval bug bites. Uh, they're really, really small because they can't handle the larger chunks, which is what I give to the adults. Now, what's important to me whenever I'm feeding uh, my shrimp is I want the food pellets that I give them need to be loaded with a lot of uh, calcium and protein. This is what helps them... Um, with their molting okay you know because uh the majority of the time the people who have problems with their shrimp it all has to do in the general hardness um department and let me and their tds and let me get my tds meter right fast oh, i thought i had this ready for you so with uh with shrimp 
here's my TDS meter. Let's turn it on. All right, let's stick it in. Now, with uh, Neo Caradinas, uh, a good TDS is anywhere from 220 to 300. If I see it getting above 300, I know it's time to do a water change, and then I'll also see what it is that's causing it to go up, which rarely is um, ammonia. But anyone who watched my um, dehumidifier uh, debacle, you know, I'm now like <laughs> paranoid about ammonia, but I don't use it anymore. I just double check. So two, 236 is what we got, uh, which is perfect. Uh, temperature, when it comes to uh, shrimp, um, let's, the cooler you have it, the slower that they're, they are going to develop. So they'll actually live longer. Um, now the warmer you have it, if you have it anywhere between like 72 and 76 degrees, ooh, here's a really dark, true blue, uh, blue dream, and a little baby black, really. Sorry, I could be looking down here for hours because, you know, it's hard to tell, but there's actually like hundreds in here. Some are just so small, not even my phone camera can pick them up. And, oh yeah, here we go. They found the food they're eating. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because now they're eating. All right. Oh, here's one of those ones I was talking about. Black and blue striped. Look at that. Right there on the driftwood. Wicked. Yeah. All right. So temperature. Uh, I would recommend keeping it between 70 to 72. That keeps them at about a normal average lifespan. Well, they will... They will live their expected lifetime, which can be anywhere from a year to two years. Um, if you go higher than that, if you start hitting 74, 75, 76, they're going to breed a lot faster, but they're also going to die. Their lifespan is going to be cut in half. Now, if you want them to live a really long time, you can make the temperature as cold as like, yeah, you know, 67, 68, but they are, um, they're not going to breed. They're not going to get into breed mode, but they will live longer. Now, over here, we do have one that unfortunately uh, passed. Uh, it's I'm unclear as to what it is. You, you, you know, for us hobbies, it's always you know it's easy for us to think, oh, we did something wrong. When sometimes you know it just happened. But right now, this one's being feasted on by a bunch of babies. I know it's hard to see. There's some babies. Anyway, uh, whenever they do molt, I leave their shells. Their shells are loaded with a lot of calcium, and uh, it's important that they have as much as possible. When it comes to general hardness, um, you can go as high as 15. Really not necessary, though. You start getting into 15 general hardness, and your TDS is going to be extremely high. Um, and then I like to keep mine around 7 to 10. So I already took some water, and we're going to go test it and see what mine's at. And, you know, the, the thing is, is consistency. If your general hardness is always out of whack, you know, it's an 8 one day, a 7 the next day, you know, and then it jumps up to a 9, you're going to start having failed molts back, back to back. And a good way to tell that you're having general hardness problems is if you notice one of your, uh, any of your shrimp have a white, solid ring around ooh, ooh, hold on before i lose it here it is another uh carbon really variant see how he's got like black speckles but then he's like blue it's just so awesome i'm just like really proud of myself that uh that i created these Ooh, yes i created life i am god <laughs> okay i won't go that far i did that to my wife once and she almost kicked me out anyway uh, all right, so let's go test the parameters, and I'll show you what I keep mine at. And one helpful tip: tip. Anytime you buy uh, Neo Caradina shrimp or Caradina shrimp or Go shrimp, whatever kind you buy, test the water that they're coming from, so you know you know what atmospheres they're coming from, and if it is significantly different from yours. You're gonna that you're gonna need to take your time on the drip out acclimation, and you do want to buy them in group. Don't just buy one shrimp, um, buy several because there are some. Even if you take a really long time acclimating them, 
some of them just don't like the transfer, um, you know, and they pass away. And it's unfortunate, but when you have stable parameters and you never change anything and you keep it the same, you will watch babies happen generation after generation after generation, and it is awesome. So let's cut this short. Let's take one more look at the awesome carbon down there and you know you can like see babies on the glass back there but seriously when they're born they're so small they're microscopic you can't tell the difference between uh them and literally like a speck i mean smaller than like a, a air bubble um so ooh, here's here's one right here chilling there's a bunch up here i am digging it I'm, all right, all right, I got to stop so we can go test the water so we can see where we're at. All right, give me one moment, and let's go test some water and see what I've got for you guys. All right, welcome back. Okay, so I already collected this from that tank. Uh, no, you didn't see me do it, but you'll just have to believe me. Yes, it came. I actually needed to test my water. Um, when it comes to shrimp, it's really important that you have a solid idea of where your general hardness is at, at least once a week, you know, because anything you use, uh, like crushed coral or, uh, or, or, or aragonite, or in my case, I use, uh, actual, um, uh, beach sand. Um, I, I didn't gather it from the beach. I just, I, I buy bags of, of beach sand. So first we're going to touch the, uh, general hardness and yes, um, uh, liquid testers are much more accurate um, than test strips. I do have test strips, so they're not useless. It's just when you're dealing with something like shrimp, you want to have as close of an idea of how precise your general hardness is and your carbonate hardness is when it comes to shrimp. You know, um, with, with tropical fish and other things, it's all right to give or take here and there. Um, anyway, so to test the general hardness... Pretty simple. Take the cap off of here, and uh, if this turns orange, then we have a positive for general hardness. So it looks green, and then so let's take a look here and do one drop, and put the lid on. We're gonna shake it up, and I know it's hard to tell, but yes, we have a positive for hardness. So that's one. So. Right now, general hardness of one, and we're going to keep adding drops, and then whenever the water turns green, that's where we stop. So two, and yes, you want to put the cap on and shake it every time. So two, three. You see, and it's getting darker and darker orange, and then eventually, boom, it'll just turn green. Four. Five. All right, good, good. You don't want anything below six. You start getting to six, you're, you may need to re-up on your crushed coral or whatever it is you put, you use to manipulate that. Six. Seven. All right, turn green, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, I like to keep my general hardness at seven, um, and there we go. It's been that way for months, and they are thriving and multiplying. And one other helpful tip, if you want to breed uh, dwarf neocaridina shrimps or caridinas, it's best to start off um, in a 10-gallon tank. Um, I had heard someone say, you, you can't breed uh, shrimp in a 40 gallon or anything larger than that because they have a hard time finding each other, which is true. Um, so what 
I am aiming for is I want to breed them by the hundreds in this 10 gallon. Once I have a couple hundred, then I want to make a 40 gallon tank that I can, you know, have thousands. Um, you know, so we're starting in the 10. I'm just waiting on them to fully mature. So now let's test our carbonate hardness and uh, carbonate hardness. Um, it needs to be stable. That's important too. Uh, that controls your pH. Um, where is my, oh, here's my carbonate hardness. Um, I keep this between four and eight on the carbonate hardness. Uh, if it's a little bit higher, that's fine. You know, it's just when it comes to carbonate hardness, that is key with the success with everything else. Whatever your carbonate hardness is, it in general, it controls the pH and it controls how much, um, general hardness and other things that can be dumped into it without altering your pH. So, all right, so this is yellow. If it turns blue, we get a positive for carbonate hardness. We get a positive, here's blue, same thing. Every drop, we're gonna keep adding a drop until it turns yellow. Two, three, yeah, isn't this fun? All right, three, four, Five, six, I bet this is going to be eight or nine. Seven. Eight. All right. Ooh. Chemistry, science, blue to yellow. How's it work? Who knows? All right. Awesome. So my parameters are perfect. Um, with liquid testers, I stick with um, general hardness and carbon hardness are the most important to me on um, the exact parameters uh, when it comes to shrimp. And then, of course, getting yourself an ammonia uh, tester. I don't ever have to worry about uh, nitrites and nitrates. You know, I take my time in this hobby. I let um, I let my tanks mature and age and and become fully planted. You know, where I don't have to worry about those those types of things. You know, I understand how it works. Now there are a lot of YouTubers out there, you know, who are like, let's insta cycle the tank. There's no reason to rush it. You know, make your tank, put some plants in there, fill it all the way up with plants, let your plants fully go through their transition to a submerged state and grow and flourish and be, and, you know, cover the whole tank and then, and then start adding inhabitants. Now don't just dump a dozen inhabitants in there, you know, because now they're going to be adding additional uh, waste. Uh, with shrimp though, because they're so small and that 10 gallon, um, I started off with, uh, I bought six, I bought six, one, one month. Actually, no, I did it. I did them the same and in, in, I, I did, did two half dozen in one month. So I did six and then two to three weeks later, I added six more and, uh, I never noticed a spike in ammonia or anything like that. And, uh, I had three buried, um, the light blue or the blue je jelly uh, got pregnant. One of my black reallys got pregnant. And then one of the blue dreams got pregnant. And then I got all of these awesome looking different patterns of blues, essentially, which is what I was going for. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, please ask. I'm a nice guy. I like to talk to everybody. Um, you know, and don't be afraid to request something. I do have several projects going on. Um, 
here in about a week. I'm going to, for people who don't want to do a dirted tank, I'm going to teach how to do a really easy uh, rhizome plant um, 20 gallon tank where uh, I'll virtually have no, no dirt. We're going to do pebbles and uh, just do rhizome plants on driftwood and show you that you can make a, a really awesome tank that, you know, you, you don't have to have it dirted with a bunch of rooted plants, you know, so, uh, and I already know what kind of fish are going to go in there too, so that will be an upcoming video, but if anyone has any suggestions, anyone who's been following me for a long time know, if they have a question and I feel that it needs a whole video, I'll make a whole video just for that one subscriber. So, with that said, I hope you've been having a great day. And if you're not having a great day, like always, get up and do something about it. Don't sit there in the dumps. All right, I've been there.